Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and another top five day. So today I want to do top five reasons to learn Linux. So top five reasons to learn Linux in general. And we could be talking about GNU Linux on a desktop. We could be command line Linux. Any type of Linux is up for consideration today. Uh, I did focus air on areas of, of kind of a home projecty type stuff. But regardless, um, I want to deal in, uh, go in and deal with the top five uh, reasons why you might want to learn Linux. And the first reason is that you can come up with a lot of cool home projects. And you can just get online and just search for fun home projects if you're looking for neat ideas. Or you might have things that you know of. Now, I don't have time to just sit here, jump online, and just look for neat ideas. What I do is I ask myself, what are the legitimate needs that I have in how I run and operate my office? And so um, what I wanted to focus on here is looking at uh, and some of the projects that I've done. So, you know, a media center for home. So you can take a Raspberry Pi and turn this into a Kodi powered media center where you can you can do some videos. If you can find some that are DRM free, you can do your music. You can even show your programs. But the other things that Kodi can do is you can put on a YouTube app, documentary apps. I do TED Talks, several other groups or several news organizations have clips where you can pull in and watch the individual clips so you can plug in a Raspberry Pi to your TV on your network and you can have a basically and effectively like a smart TV that doesn't spy on you quite as much and that's great because kitties like watching you all right um, but anyway the home projects are are the fun things to do um, they have SSH gateway if you want to access multiple computers on your network you can do things like that um, you can do a closed circuit TV slash pet camera. So it's getting a Raspberry Pi and you can get a Pi camera so you can do stuff like this. So there's all sorts of neat stuff that you can do with, with a Raspberry Pi, but you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi. You can use other things. So the things that I have built on Pis or otherwise in my office that are handy is uh, one is I have a NAS drive. It serves as a, both a, a media server, I guess all of the above, a media server, a file server, so I can share files back and forth between the computers more quickly without having to, to worry about is a computer getting on or connecting and all these different things. I just have one place where all the computers can share files to, uh, one place where all the computers can, can grab media files from so I don't have to distribute media files to computers. And uh, that also now, as of today, I finally finished the book server. And so any ebooks that I have can drop right into that thing, and I can now have a constantly running ebook server. And so there are just so many cool home projects you can come up with on Linux. So the second re thing that uh, uh, the second thing that, that uh, you can do with with your uh, uh, Linux at home is a uh, just basic easy home servers. Now I use Open Media Vault for mine, which is mostly a NAS drive, but there's some server elements to it. You could use a Raspberry Pi to just have a more customized server. But a Linux server is a is a free server that you can use. Versus if you want to do a Windows server, you'd still have to pay for a Windows site license. And so you have this ability to have a really good server with a lot of good functionalities and a lot of good capabilities, whether you are doing it for a NAS or media servers or anything else, you can build just a general basic server at home uh, without the extra cost. All it takes is just learning a little bit, but this is why we're talking about five reasons to learn Linux. Now, the third reason is uh, low cost applications for startups. And this is a this is a really important thing because as our company becomes more hostile to small startups and more favoring towards the large companies, especially with the companies, you know, getting rid of the basic software sales model where I go in and I just buy my software, now it's becoming that every software is becoming a subscription model. And the reality is a small startup company on a bootstrap budget does not have the money to be dumping into proprietary software month in and month out and month in and month out. Startups just do not have that kind of revenue stream. They're trying to get to that point. 
Now, you could always go out and raise funding and all this kind of stuff, but in reality, the majority of businesses fail and the majority of the reason for that is failed investments and uh, not, not spending your money appropriately. But if you take the time to learn Linux systems, and particularly this would be Linux desktops across your small, uh, you know, small startup, taking the time to learn the Linux software um, you can learn a lot of the open source programs. Now, granted, a lot of the open source programs I'm talking about are also available on, uh, on uh, Windows and on Mac as well. However, um, running a lot of these inside of Linux gets you that open source community and the open source environment and uh, just gives you the, the ability to, to learn and get more comfortable with a lot of different open source platforms. But I mean, I think of you know game design stuff. They don't teach you how to do things on GIMP, they teach you on Photoshop. They don't teach you Inkscape, they teach you on Illustrator. For gaming stuff, they don't teach you on Blender, they teach you on 3DS Max. And it kind of ties you in because you think that you don't have the education on this other software package, but you already know this one, and so you just gotta keep on doing it. But right now, like 3DS Max is a couple hundred dollars a month to use. And a small startup company trying to build video games cannot be throwing that kind of money away. Um, not without debt, and debt's going to kill the small businesses. So being careful, uh, being careful to watch your startup costs. Why pay a lot for extra software when there is free and open source software that will do just the same? If you become successful in that, please give some money back to the developers so they can continue to work on it. But it's better than having a, a rope around your neck. You know, it's better that you use a software and, and can't throw as much back at the company than that you completely go out of business, but all your money is going to the software manufacturer. For for a short period of time. And so keeping that in mind, lower cost applications for startup is a very good reason to use Linux. Now the, uh, the fourth reason I came up with is it is way easier to rebuild your computer. I'm a guy that has rebuilt computers in the Windows world multiple times, you know? I mean, if you get up and your computer crashes, you're just like, oh, hard drive crashed, horrible. Plan on a day or so to rebuild that thing. You got to reinstall the software. You got to let the updates go. You pretty much can't use the computer in that time. It's going up. It's going down. It takes forever to reload all the software, and then you got to find all the files and stuff. Man, on Linux, if the hard drive goes out, get the nearest USB, plug in a USB, boot off of that thing, get back to work, and solve the computer problems when you got time. Okay, but you can also, it's a lot easier and there's a lot more options to restore a failed computer. So as I was building my book server this weekend, I completely killed my Open Media Vault server. Or, whoops. <laughs> but you know what? I had backups from right before I started to do it. Like, it took me 20 minutes to reinstall all the backup. I simply took the drive out of the system, plugged it into the computer, went into my disk manager, clicked restore disk image, Boom, took the thing back out of the computer, 20 minutes later, plugged it in, perfect. Things exactly where it was prior to the backup. Now, you can do full backups like that, or you can do simple operating system backups and just redeploy your home folder. But this article here is 10 easy ways to restore your Linux system. And uh, they just kind of talk about it several different ways, um, uh, ways to do this. So on Linux, it is way easier, way easier to restore your system. Whether it be something like a time shift, which I believe kind of works like a snapshot platform, or just building a separate system image and serving it on another, or setting it out on another drive and reinstalling it to your computer uh, at, at will. But this article just covers a lot of different systems. Um, I think I've used back in time. Um, system back is a good one. You can use this to make to make basic distros and you can choose you know, what you're including, etc. So there's a whole lot of options here that you can basically take your entire computer and flash it onto a backup and then very easily restore it. Now you can do a lot of that with the Windows system as well, but a lot of what the Windows systems and current backups are doing are much like the, the mobile app backups. It doesn't make a full backup of, of all your stuff. It makes a backup of all your files. You still have to rebuild the system and then mess with all the system configurations to get them the way you want. By using these system restores in Linux, everything is deployed exactly back to the hard drive exactly the way it was. 
basically like cloning your hard drive, which you could accomplish by making a, you know, making a clone of your hard drive and reflashing the clone. Is doable in, an, in a Windows environment, but it's not, there's not as many options and it's not nearly as easy to just spin the thing up, quickly install the software that you need to run and add your files from your backup and get back to work. You know, you can be back to work in 10 minutes on Linux. It would take a minimum of a couple of hours on a Windows system. So it's way easier to rebuild your computer. And then the fifth reason I chose to talk about uh, learning Linux in 2017 is to give old computers new life. If you have a computer running XP, running Vista, you want to get those off of the system, but you can't really upgrade those easily to Windows 10. It's just not going to work well. But you could throw one of these very lightweight Linux distros on there. Still won't be a perfectly snappy system, but it's going to work a whole lot better than trying to run XP with all the security holes or with any modern uh, Windows operating system. So, you know, you can try out Linux Lite, which is nice. I've never used uh, Crunchbang. Uh, Bodhi Linux, um, I've used that one before. That looks pretty nice. Um, El Ubuntu, I use this for my banking software on an encrypted environment. So that's a very nice, uh, very nice lightweight platform as well. Um, you have your Sparky Linux. Uh, Puppy Linux is one of the classic lightweight ones, and they have Tiny Core. And then there's some other, uh, there are some other lightweight Linux distros as well. I've used Peppermint to restore uh, some old, uh, old computers into modern uh, operating systems as well. So there you have it. There's five reasons to learn Linux in 2017. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, once again, if you do like what we are doing, you can help support us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there are also Amazon links down below. If you want to shop on Amazon, click that link, buy from there, and Amazon will send a small portion of the sales to help out Switch to Linux with video production. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.